Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So we are having a major problem here on our farm, or at least a major problem as some of you may be concerned, and that is we are having lots and lots of males born this year. As a matter of fact, between our sheep and our goats, we have almost over 85% males. And so the question has come up, hey, is there anything that you can do about that? Is there anything you can do as a producer to actually make your flock produce more males or more females? The answer might surprise you. Stay tuned to find out more. Over the years, as far back as I can remember, even when I was raising sheep as a kid, the question would come up about, you know, we would be upset if we were having too many males, or maybe it was a year when we needed more males and we were having too many females. And there was a lot of rumors and misinformation out there about things that you could do to actually make it come out to where you're having more males than females or more females than males. And actually, in hindsight, none of them were actually true at all. But it, of course, it didn't keep us from trying. Now, the reality is uh, getting much more clear, especially over the last few decades. Starting in about 2008, we've seen some pretty interesting scientific research that has shed a lot of light on the subject. There's about three specific points that I want to talk to you about and how you can utilize these points to help you have more males or females depending on what it is that you desire for your goat or sheep flock. So when it comes down to it, the reality is, is if you crunch all the numbers and you take all the variables out of the equation, generally speaking, it's about a 50-50 mix. If you wanna get down in the real deep weeds of it, over the lifespan of a ewe or a doe, they will have about 49.9% males and the rest, the 50.1% will be females. But it, they don't happen in a very specific manner. As a matter of fact, our first point is this, scientific research has shown that our males and our females are born in very specific times in a ewe or a doe's life. So statistically speaking, when a ewe or a doe starts having their babies, they tend to lean more heavily towards the female side of babies. That is to say, for the first two years of life, they tend to have a propensity for more females than males. And this is in the upper 50th percentile close to 60%. And as they get to that three to seven years of age, that prime breeding age that we like to think of, they tend to lean more heavily towards males. Later on in life, as they start to slow down, getting up over seven into the eight to 10 to 11 years of age, they kind of revert back to that female propensity towards having babies again. They don't know why this is, but they think it may have something to do with just the general health of the animal and the way that they ovulate, which we will get into a little later. So that is very interesting. Now that is talking specifically about single births. And that is what brings us into our second interesting point. And that is every subsequent birth past a single birth tends to be overwhelmingly female. If you are to look at this, just the statistical data over the lifespan of a ewe or a doe, if they have twins, you have a very low chance that they are going to be two males. More than likely, overwhelmingly, getting into the 70th percentile, they are going to have one male and one female. And if they have triplets, the chances of them having a male, a female, and another female is very high as well. Getting all females isn't as high. Getting all males is probably the lowest. And then somewhere in the middle, getting that male and female mix is extremely high. So it appears that with multiple births, you're at least going to get one male and one female. And of course, this isn't the rule. This is just, if you're going to roll the dice, every animal is different and, and we need to understand that. Now, getting into the last one, 
This is very interesting because we talk about nutrition. So before we get into nutrition, I just want to speak briefly about this right here. And this explains in very general terms what those of you out there that raise animals probably already know. And those of you that have ever gone through a basic biology class probably know, but it bears repeating. Basically, a female has an egg and the male have sperm. Now, the female has chromosomes and the male have chromosomes that make them a biological male or a biological female. In the case of females, they carry two chromosomes that make them a biological female, which is X and X. That's all they have is these two X chromosomes. Males, on the other hand, have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And this has a lot to do with, or I should say everything to do with, the sex of the babies. When males produce sperm, some of the sperm are female, that is to say their X chromosome sperm, and some of the sperm are Y chromosome. They don't have both, they just have one or the other. And there's a couple very interesting characteristics that you can see when you look at these sperm. All right, so if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. We are all about educating you and giving you some extra tools to use with your journey on your small farm, your hobby farm, or wherever you fall on the spectrum of individuals that practice animal husbandry with sheep and goats. You can go to our website at www.lenessafarms.com. And if you click up here in the corner, you'll see that it will take you to a download section where you can get all kinds of interesting things that will help you out a lot with your farm. This includes medication, spreadsheets, health records, and other valuable information that you can use. If you're working on your mobile device, if you click on these three little lines up here, what you'll find is that'll take you to that information as well. If you have any questions or if you have any concerns, the best way to reach us and other like-minded individuals is to head over to Facebook and utilize Facebook by finding our group. Our group is Lanessa Farms TAC Box. The TAC Box, I really like. I think it's a valuable tool for those of you that want to interact with other individuals from across the world. We have lots and lots of knowledge on there and you could help out by giving some of your knowledge on there as well. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So when we look at sperm produced by the male, the X chromosome sperm tend to live longer and they tend to be just slightly slower. And that is because they carry just a little bit more DNA. So they can live longer, but they're a little bit slower in the race when they're heading towards that female egg. Now the males on the other hand, the male sperm, that Y sperm, has a little less DNA inside of it and it's a little bit smaller because of that and it can also travel just a little bit faster. So if everything is perfect, if everything's laid out perfect and there's ovulation just at the same time that the breeding is occurring, the chances of that Y sperm making it to the egg first is slightly higher just because it's smaller and a little bit faster. But when we start to get in the area where you know, maybe things aren't exactly perfect, maybe ovulation isn't exactly on time with the breeding, then you start to get into these situations where the longer time passes, the more likely you are to have a female born because you know that female sperm is kind of like slow and steady wins the race kind of a mentality. So scientists found that if females were more well-nourished and had a better body condition, that they were more apt to have males than females. And no one really understood why until some scientists did what scientists do and they boiled it down to what was going on in the nutrition. And what scientists were able to find was that ewes and does that had very high levels of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in their diet at the time of ovulation and at the time of breeding tended to have more males. Now, what does this mean? Well, they don't know for sure, but what we do know about omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids is that it decreases the overall inflammation in the body. These are very powerful anti-inflammatory supplements that you can take into your body. So what the scientists think, and this is just a hypothesis, is that when the ewes have a very, very good nutritional background, they have very low inflammation, we're setting them up for one of those 
uh, really good scenarios to where when they're breeding, everything's just right. The pH of their body is just right. They're very, very healthy and very receptive to becoming pregnant. And again, those little sperm, those faster Y sperm are able to get to the egg quicker. So what does this mean in the grand scheme of things if you need females or if you need males? Well, when we follow the science, I hate to use that term because we've all, well, we all know why I hate to use that term, especially in the current day. So I'm not going to say follow the science. If we read a, the literature on science and educate ourselves, it would appear that the best chances you have to have males born in your flock is to first pick ewes or does that are between the ages of about three and seven and to give them very good nutrition, which is high in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, up to the very day that you are going to breed them. On the other hand, if you really want to maximize your potential, statistically speaking, of having females, you'll want to maximize the number of young ewes and does, that is yearlings up to about two years of age, I would say, or you're older, over seven years of age, use and dose. And when you flush them, well, that is that flushing that we talk about um, prior to breeding, where you're really giving them that good nutrition, you're gonna wanna flush them out. And then you're gonna wanna take a couple weeks off of flushing and hold them back and just go back to regular diet before you put them out to breed. Statistically speaking, this should increase your odds of having more females. Does all of this make for an exact science? Of course not. The main goal that you wanna have is to have the healthiest flock that you can and let the cards fall as they may. We care more about our animals being healthy when they're born than we care at all about them being males or females. And look at it this way. If you're gonna have twins, which we all want because it's really gonna raise that ratio in your farm. If you're gonna have twins, the statistical likelihood of you having at least one male and one female is pretty high as well. So that's just what we aim for in our flock. Um, we want them to be as healthy as possible. We want as many twins as possible, and we hope for the best. If you appreciate the information and the videos that we put out for all of you, and you would like to help support Lanasa Farms, please check out our website right here that will lead you to Patreon where you can find more information. I'm Tim from Lanasa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining me again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.